Well, welcome everyone at all of our different locations to Switch. I'm so glad you guys have joined us tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Garrett. I have the privilege of being one of the youth pastors here at Life Church. So excited to be here with you guys tonight. Here's the deal. We are going to talk about something really, really important. It's so important that everybody in this room and every room watching is dealing with this thing right now. But what I want to do is I want to first set the goal for tonight. What's the goal? What do we want to accomplish? Here's what it is. I want to know whether you would agree or disagree with the following statement, that fear is real, but so is the power of God. That's good enough. I'm going to say it again so we can all bring our minds around it. Fear is real, but so is the power of God. Mm. The, 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 one of the most fearful moments of my life um, was I was in the eighth grade. Okay, I was in the eighth grade. I, I'm, I'm on this RA's trip. If you don't know what RA's are, we're called the Royal Ambassadors. It was something that we did in my church growing up. We were the Royal Ambassadors for God. I, there was like a, a song and a chant. I'm not going to do it because I like my job and I want to keep it. So I'm not going to make it up right now. But, but what we did was we were going on this team building exercise and we're going canoeing down the Brazos River in the heart of Texas. Okay, I had never been canoeing before, never been in my life, but I was really excited to go. So there's about 20 of us eighth grade boys, and we've got a couple of our dads that are with us. What happened was I got paired up with the most terrible partner to be partnered with. His name was Zach. Me and Zach were very good friends, but here's the deal. Me and Zach were very much alike in the fact that we were very easily distracted. We didn't give much thought to anything. And so as we're canoeing down the river, we look up and we notice we're falling a little behind everybody, like a quarter of a mile. Like, I don't know how this happened. We're like trying to reach down in the water and grab fish out of the water. And we're like splashing each other with the oars um, from the river. And we, so we, we go a little further and we look back up and we're like out of, we're, they're out of sight. Like we can't even find the people that we're with anymore. So now a little bit of fear starts to set in. I start to panic a little bit. And so Zach and I, we are starting to canoe, but here's the problem. When you get panicked, you just want to, you just want to get where you're trying to go and you forget what you're trying to do. And so we both put the oars on the right side because we're both right-handed. And so we just start paddling. Well, if you don't know what canoeing does, paddling on the same side is you start to go this way. All right. And so now we're headed towards the bank. The rest of our crew has left because they're all mean and they don't care about us. And now we're stuck on the bank. We hit the bank and we get stuck on like this big tree kind of thing. So now fear is setting in. I'm going to die out here. I start counting through the food like Zach. I think we got enough for three days. Maybe, maybe this mountain becomes our home. Maybe we just got to turn into mountain men and live off of the land. The problem was neither of us knew what we were doing now. By the grace of God, there was, there, was, there was success coming in our future. But before we got there, fear turned into anxiety. And now I'm in the back of the canoe crying my eyes out because I'm dramatic and I needed to cry this moment out. Zach, have you ever seen like those romantic comedy movies where a guy gets his heart broken and he walks outside or he like runs outside all throwing a fit and he like stares up at the sky and he's like, why? And it's usually always raining on him. That was now, but instead of the rain, Zach's got his oar in the air and he's like, why God? Just freaking out. Fear has now set in. The anxiety is taking over. By the grace of God, we got off the bank. Somehow, we got off the bank and we start canoeing down the river. We turn the corner and everybody hit all, like they pulled over and they're all just clapping for us. They're all just like, you guys did it. They had heard the whole thing. They heard us screaming. They heard me crying. They're just a bunch of bullies. Like they did not care that we were stuck back there thinking we're going to die here. Now I tell this story because every one of us has dealt with some sort of fear or anxiety in our lives. We've all felt it. We've all, we've all been a part of it. And what, what I'm afraid of is that so many people, they get stuck in this fear and this anxiety, and they think that this is it. This is my life. This is how it has to be. And that's not true. Fear is real, but so is the power of God. So is the power of God. The dictionary says that fear is actually defined as an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. So I see a truck coming at me. I probably need to get out of the way because it's going to run me over. That's the fear. You, you anticipate it. The dictionary says that anxiety is defined as an abnormal and overwhelming sense of apprehension and fear. Fear happens first then anxiety. The anxiety is now every time you see a truck, whether it's parked or even turned on or not, you're like, nope, 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 it's going to hit me. Every time you revisit that fear, that's when anxiety starts to build. 
Every time you revisit that, that moment that you had fear, the anxiety begins to build and build and build, and it starts to make a home inside of you. Today, today, in today's day, six out of 10 American teenagers, for those of you that are slower with math like I am, that's 60% of the American teenagers between 12 and 17 in America deal with some sort of anxiety in their lives. And that's heartbreaking. Because if we're not careful, we'll try to combat this fear and this anxiety without remembering the fact that although fear is real, so is the power of God. Maybe some of you, you have been in the, in the midst of your fear. Maybe you grew up in church like I did, or maybe you, you, you're a follower of Christ, and you've heard somebody say before when you're feeling this fear, this anxiety, you've heard them say, um, hey, just, just have faith. How many of you have ever wanted to Jesus punch somebody like that, just square in the throat? Side note, a Jesus punch, I believe, is a punch that is justified in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because you're like, hold on, hold on, no, 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 you don't know what I'm going through. Don't tell me to just have faith. The problem is I'm not necessarily worried about the faith I'm having. I'm worried about whether God cares. I'm worried about whether he's actually feeling what I'm feeling right now. I'm worried about whether he's actually seeing what is going on in my life right now. Does he care? And as we try to answer that question, as we get to the answer of that question, I want you to remember that fear is real, but so is the power of God. In John chapter 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples. These are his homies. This is his squad. He's been hanging out with them. He's been doing ministry with them. They've seen him do some really, really, really cool things. Jesus just up and tells them, hey, guys, um, I'm leaving, and, and you can't come with me. And they're like, hold up. What? You're leaving? What, what, where are you going? What Jesus is doing is he's setting them up for what is going to be the greatest act in the, in the existence of this world. But what he's telling them is, I'm going somewhere, and you can't come with me. Think about, think about the pressure that that is. For context, they have seen Jesus touch people who were deaf, and now they can hear. They've seen Jesus touch people who couldn't walk, and they stood up and walked. They've seen Jesus touch people who couldn't see, and their eyes were opened, and now they can see. They've seen Jesus speak to a dead person. And now they're alive. Wow. This is the Jesus that they were hanging out with. And now he's saying, I'm leaving. You can't come with me. This is a problem for them. Right. Maybe this is a problem for you. Yeah. Maybe some of you are in that same boat right now, feeling what the disciples are feeling. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe a loved one in your life has passed away. For whatever reason. And now you're having to deal with life without them. Maybe some of you, you're, you're dealing with a, a best friend who really isn't even a friend anymore in your life. Maybe some of you, you, you've had that conversation recently with your parents that have said, one of us is leaving. And now a parent figure in your life is no longer there. You're missing a person that you care about. And this is how the disciples are feeling. And this is what Jesus says to them. He says in John 14, 27, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And this peace I give is a gift this world cannot take away. So don't be troubled or afraid. He said, I'm leaving a peace with you. I'm leaving this peace of mind and of heart with you. And then don't be afraid. That's what he says to them. They're running through this situation like uh, easier said than done, Jesus. Like, we don't need a gift. We appreciate the gesture, but you don't have to get us a gift. We'd just like for you to stay. You don't need to go anywhere. But he did. And in order for us to be able to experience this peace that he is talking about, we have to understand exactly what this peace is. This peace is what we call the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, the spirit version of God himself dwelling among his followers. It is literally God in a spirit form filling up your life in every capacity, in every situation. Anyone who has begun a relationship with Christ, the Holy Spirit is a part of their life now. The Holy Spirit is there and you can absolutely have this peace. This Holy Spirit is, it's all God. It's all the mercy. It's all the grace. It's all the, the forgiveness. It's all of God. 
And it's available to each and every one of us. So to answer the question from before, does God actually care about my fears? Yes, he does. So much so that when every other religion in this world says to get to that God, you have to clean yourself up. You have to live a life that is, that is perfect. You have to do these things in order to get to him. God says, no, no, you're my creation. I'm going to send a spirit version of myself to dwell with you in your fear, in your anxiety, in your pain. You will have my presence with you. You will have it. The disciples knew this though. They knew that they can count on Jesus. Jesus told them something. They knew that they could believe him, yet they still doubted. The disciples knew all of this and yet they were still so fearful of Jesus leaving. This is what Jesus said to them in John 16, 22. He says, so you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. Jesus was acknowledging that although they would feel sorrow, they would feel pain, they would feel like they've been let down, it wouldn't last. Some of you tonight, you need to hear that, that your pain is not going to last. Your anxiety, your fear, it's not going to last. So what do we do? Some of you know this, you've heard this before, but you're still waiting on this peace that God's promising. You're still waiting on this peace that is supposed to be available to everyone. You still feel like the weight of the world is pushing down on you. You need to know that his, his peace is available to you. It's unlimited. Unlimited peace, unlimited grace, unlimited mercy, unlimited love. It's all here for you. So you might be thinking, okay, Garrett, I'm kind of following. We've, we've now come to figure out that I struggle with fear and anxiety. Now what do I do? That's a great question. You see, tonight, you're actually sitting in a switch group. And if you're not sitting in one right now, you will be soon. And sometimes God's greatest peace is the people around you. Sometimes God's greatest peace is showing you people around you that care, that have been through what you've been through, that have, that have come to the other side of what you're dealing with right now. God, sometimes the greatest love, the greatest peace that he can show is people being the answer to your prayer that you keep praying. And that's in your switch group tonight. You can talk to them. You can open up to them. You can share in this fear because, because God is with this. God is with this whole process. In your fear, in your anxiety, God is with it. And what you guys have to understand, what you have to understand is sometimes... You're, you're, you're praying for an answer to your prayer and that prayer is somebody else. But Switch, I need you to realize sometimes you are the answer to somebody else's prayer. Sometimes you are the person that although I have this fear, this anxiety, I am moving through it because God is going with me and now I get to help somebody else. Sometimes, Switch, you could be the answer to somebody's prayer for peace. God wants to use you. He wants to use all of us. We don't want to do this alone. We want to do this together, move through this together. What I, what I love about Jesus is that when he speaks, you can't help but think everything is going to be okay. In the midst of it all, in the midst of all the trouble, you can't help but think, okay, Jesus said it, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good. Jesus said in John 16, as his disciples are still, still in the midst of their fear, Jesus tells them, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. That's fear, that's doubt, that's anxiety, that's stress. You will have it. But then Jesus responds in the most powerful way. He says, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Earlier I said, God is bigger than your problems and he is. He is bigger than all your problems. And through the life of his son, Jesus, he faced all the problems that we could face in this life. And he defeated them. Through the life of his son, Jesus, Jesus was tempted by the devil in the wilderness for 40 straight days, but he never gave in. He was rejected by his hometown, but he kept moving. He was mocked by the people that didn't believe what he believed, but he kept teaching. 
He was betrayed by his very own friend, but he kept loving. He was arrested out of jealousy, but he went willingly. Why? Because he was executed on a cross for crimes that he never committed for you and for me. And through all of it, Jesus came through to the other side to show that your anxiety and your fear that you're facing, it doesn't stand against him. His life was laid down so you could move through the fear, through the anxiety, through the doubts. His life was a sacrifice so that you could move through it. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, give all your cares to God because he cares for you. Everything, give it over to God. Your cares, your fears, your doubts, your anxiety, all of it, give it to God because God has defeated it and he cares for you. Switch tonight. Tonight, some of you need to realize God does care. He does care about your fear. Jesus makes us the promise that we, we will go through it, but he'll go through it with us. Fear is real. Doubt is real. Anxiety, stress, confusion, it's all real. But so is the power of God. And that power is available to you tonight. So Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for all that you're doing God, we are so grateful that you have made a way for us, that you have provided us with the hope and the peace that we could not provide for ourselves. And tonight I pray that peace over every student. As we continue praying with heads bowed and eyes closed, there are some of you here tonight at all of our locations who would say, my life has been crippled by fear. My life has been run by fear. I've, I've, I've given my life over to Christ, but I've never actually trusted him with the fear and the anxiety in my life. And tonight you're ready to say, you know what? God, I can't keep doing this. You and I are never going to be where we can be if I keep trying to hold on to my fear and my anxiety. Tonight, you're ready to give it over. Just like 1 Peter 5, 7 says, give your cares to God because he cares for you. Tonight, you're ready to give your cares over to God. If that's your prayer, would you lift your hands high right now so I can pray for you? Got hands up all over the place. God, we thank you for each student lifting their hand boldly to say, God, we give you our cares. We give you our fears. We give you our anxiety. We give you our doubt. We give it all over to you because you care for us. I pray that they would not just do that tonight, God, but as they go into their groups, they would, they would talk about how they can continue to give what is not rightfully theirs over to you because you've, you've made it through, you've conquered it, you've defeated it, and you did it for us. As we continue praying, there, there are some of you that are here tonight as well. You may actually believe that you somehow stumbled into this place on accident. You may actually believe that there was nothing here for you tonight. And I'm here to proudly say that that's not true. There are some of you that are here tonight who are faced with this decision in your life. Do I keep giving in to this fear? Do I keep giving in to the anxiety that I have? Or do I maybe consider the alternative, which is God himself who cares for me? So much so that when you couldn't provide a way, when I couldn't provide a way, when we could not make a way back to God because of the sin that we committed, God said, fine, I'll make a way for them. And his name was Jesus. And because Jesus died on a cross and then rose back to life three days later, what he did was he showed that sin no longer has control. Doubt no longer has control. Anxiety no longer has control. God has control. And because of that, he made a way for us back to him. Tonight, some of you, you thought you're here by accident, but you're not. You're here to make, you're here to make things right. You are here to choose the way of God. You are here to begin a relationship with God through his son, Jesus, because I know the Bible says that for those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Your sins will be forgiven. Your life will be made new. You will be transformed and you will begin to live a life with peace that only God can give. Some of you, that is your prayer tonight. You're ready to surrender your life to him. You're ready to begin a brand new life in God. If that's your prayer tonight, would, I, would you lift your hands high right now all across the room? 